Hi guys, this is Garth. Um, obviously since we had Martin Luther King Day and then had the snow days, we're going to try to catch up a little bit. So I'm going to do this tutorial and hopefully you can watch it before class. I know it's kind of late, but I've been thinking about how we can manage um, with the agenda I've already set up. So looking at the agenda we were going to do last week, which was the 17th, um, here's what we got going on. I would like you guys to review the pretest in the syllabus. Uh, the syllabus is located to the right, so it's right here under the required links. Um, so you can go to the required links and just click syllabus, and it will pull the syllabus up. It is a Google Doc. Um, you know, most of this you can read through at your leisure. I'm only going to point out a couple of things. Um, kind of goes through how we're going to do the objectives so you can see what we're doing to meet them. So when we do emerging text, we'll, we'll study this. You can kind of get that. Brief overview in the yellow of the overall objectives. As we scroll down, um, you know where everything's going to be found. There's no text. Obviously, everything's found at Teachers Tomorrow. You know the password. I'm not going to give that over this, but I will tell you in class if you can't remember. You know, all assignments are going to be uploaded to your blog. We're going to build our blog today. Your pretest is worth 10 points. You get 10 points for leaving five comments to the TFT blog, and I'll explain that. You're going to get um, 10 points for grading your blog buddies' work every week. So there are 10 times you grade. There should be 10 submissions by you. We're going to do a series of blogs, and unfortunately, since we changed, um, since we actually changed or missed the class, we're going to actually probably do 11, but I'll only count 10 of them, and we're going to do two probably this week in class is my goal now, slight change. I do want to point out this part. Any assignment um, that does not earn an 80% um, or 8 points out of the 10 um, can be redone, but here's the catch for you guys. you got to pay or got to listen to this. I'm not going to read every week every blog. What I typically do is read three or four at once. So it is very important that your blogs are posted the day they're due. If you do not post them the day they're due, um, then this mastery thing is irrelevant to me. I'm not going to wait for you to post. So it is very important that you post on time. I will read them. If there is not an 80% or better, you will get an email explaining what's wrong and what needs to be changed. Um, if you get an 80% or better, uh, typically, I do not send an email. Um, I will post that grade in my grade book. This can be tricky because there isn't a public record of your grade. I'm not going to put it out on the web. Um, so you can check with me or you can send an email and um, I will update you with your grades and where you're at at any time. But again, if you do get an 80 and you, you, know, you get a 60 on one, it was posted on time, you're missing stuff, you can redo that, send me an email, and I will look over it and change that grade. That's a little different than most classes. The rest of it's pretty basic. There's nothing else, but you can read over that to see what else we got. Um, if you do have any questions on the syllabus, I will take. Um, I will explain those during class. Down here was a review of what you guys knew and didn't knew. You can kind of just click on these. Each one blows up so you can actually see. Um, you know, a few of you knew what an RSS feed was. Nobody knew what Delicious was, but one of you. So that's something we're going to attack. So you can just kind of flip through these and see what you said, and then. Um, I will explain to you how we're going to do things. This is nice about the blog. We're going to use a blog, and that's good that you have an advantage there. So I would like you to review the syllabus on your own. Second, uh, you can take a look at this visual. This is comments from last year. I'm going to skip that. You can take a look at it. I just click the link. Number three says teachersfortomorrow.net. We want you to make five comments to the blog during the term. You just need to post your first name and your comment. Um, you can leave your website address in the field for the website. So let me show you how this works. When you go to Teachers for Tomorrow and you go to the main page, like our newest post is the Ed Educational Technology Conference. Um, so this is actually the presentation we gave is all there. It's in a Google Doc, so you can go through it. Um, each slide has a variety of links, so if you want to learn about the plan of the wiki book, you click it and it's going to open all that stuff up. So there's lots of links to go to. Um, there's some images, blah, blah, blah. Um, the other thing that this has is the search bar. So if you are interested in, let's say, um, visuals, and you click it, it's going to find all the posts we've ever done on visuals. So you could say, you know what, I'm really interested in, um, you know, big ideas. How do we break them down? I don't know what this is. But you take a look at it, and it goes into, oh, here's a great way to do it. This is a, a visual timeliner project. You might click on it and look at how this works. Um, and you can kind of go through and see, oh, here's a web or here's a, an app or a program that I will never necessarily speak about in class, but by just reading through the blog, you might find something. So you decide, wow, this is cool. I really want to learn about this. Um, there are comments already posted here. You just come to the bottom, 
and you put your name in. Your website can be, your email can be, nobody's going to get that but me. If you put your website into your web page, so, you know, if you put your website in, it will appear so people can go back to your website to read. And then you just type your comment. Doesn't matter to me what you say. Um, you can have him email you if you want to know if somebody else posts or not. When you click submit, you should get this. You type that in and then you submit and your comment will be on the blog post. The purpose of you leaving five of these and responding to five blog posts is because there are so many things on this web page. There are literally hundreds of topics. So, you know, again, if you type, um, you know, flip, did we talk about flip ever? It'll pull up how we talked about flip and how you could teach flip. So there's a lot of these about it. If you want to learn about how we use Skype, you type it in, it's going to pull up Skype. It's a small world with Skype, and you can look, and here we go. Um, there's also, that doesn't look like that's much. There's kindergarten teacher Skyping. There's new Skyping to become one when, when teaching goes bad. So, I mean, we pretty much tell you what's there. But this way, you're seeing all the different posts and teachers for tomorrow. Um, so that's the second thing we want you to do is to kind of over the course of the term, you know, you can do them all in one week if you want. You can do one every two weeks, and I will remind you, you should be leaving a comment. Again, just to expose you to other things. Second thing is we're going to be doing a blog. <clears throat> Everything's really here. So we've got the weekly overview, which I'm going to have to address since we already missed a week. But you can take a look at it. It's not going to change too much. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do is combine the February 3rd. I'm going to try to do the first week. Um, and I'm try to, going to try to do searches this week. And then I'll probably move Digo and Twitter back. I'm going to try to figure out a way to build this all together. I'm not sure how I'll do it yet. Notice the yellow dates are dates we will not meet on campus. This may change since we missed the snow day. I'm not sure. Um, anything in green is like what you have to do that night. So your first blog post, your second blog post, third, fourth. And again, I will change this today or tomorrow to get it up to date. But you can take a look. I don't know why it says December. I'll have to change that. Sorry. But anyways. Next thing on here is the blog rubric. The blog rubric is pretty basic. You're going to be writing each week. It's a pretty basic rubric. Um, you're going to have title explanation of your topics, a reflection on what's going on. This is important. So like maybe you do your focus. What do we focus on tonight? And you might write it this way. You know, tonight we focused on visuals and we learned about blah, 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 blah. Um, it impacted me because here's how I can see this being used in my class. And this is what I intend to do with what I learned. Um, and I'm going to show you that as we build our blog so you get a sense of how to do it. You should really have um, an image in there. You can do multiple images. Um, as you can see on like most of these blogs that we were talking about, there are multiple images embedded in each blog. So you could have a lot of images embedded. You know, again, I've got a Google PowerPoint that has literally hundreds of links inside of it you know if you go down to this one of my daughter no links but there's a oh yeah there is a link so it takes you somewhere else it takes you to a post i did on the critical uh, pedagogy of the oppressed so we want you to have a link in there to go somewhere again i can then go to this so there's a variety of links taking you all over the web it's very interactive these posts should be you know the other piece <clears throat> Um, you should have links, downloads, or film clips. That's what we were just looking at. There were links. There are videos in this case of the one we were looking at here. Um, you know, there's actually a presentation. So you can embed presentations. You can embed YouTubes. And, I mean, just scrolling down through here, you're probably going to see lots of those different things. Um, you know, there's a video embedded, and, you know, here's a story, and goodbye, and blah, 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 blah. I think you kind of get that. You're going to then do a category of them, and... Then you just submit it, okay? There is no required length. Some people write a lot. Some people write a little. Some people look at this as like they're building their own um, go-to library for later use so that they can go back and see, um, you know, just go back six weeks later and remember how to do what they talked about. And then we're going to open up our Weebly account. Now, what I would like to do in class on Monday is actually start with this. So I'm going to skip one through five, and we're going to add probably down here, like search. So we will probably do two blog posts this the first night. We'll do the first one together. Um, I'm going to build a tutorial right now so you can see that. that then you can look back at later if you need it. Um, and then we'll probably do the Y technology and then immediately go to search that first night and also do search. And then we'll look at Digo and um, 
Twitter this, the next class. Does that make sense? I kind of hope. So here we go. When you get into Weebly, sometimes it depends. You've already created an account. I'm kind of just starting from scratch. So I'm in my account. And sometimes it says, hey, let's get started. You're going to pick a site. First thing they want you to do is choose a theme. You can look through all these themes. Um, any of these pictures can be changed to whatever you want. So don't worry about the pictures. Just pick a theme you like. Um, you know, some have sites going across the top. Some have them going along the side. You just pick something you're interested in. You can change the the scenes later. So I'll pick this one and just choose it because I just want to start the process. It opens up and it automatically is building your home page. The first thing you have to create is where this is going to be. So this is the address that you will find on the web. You're always going to use a subdomain of Weebly. That's free. So it would be .weebly.com. So whatever you put here is the address. So I'm just going to call this Garth Test. That's the Garth, Garth H. Test. So that's available. It tells me it's available. This is it. Now yours should be a real name. Like mine's, you know, Teachers for Tomorrow, whatever you want to come up with, or Science with Spence, whatever it may be, you can create it. You need to pick that and you continue, and that actually becomes your, your name. I'm going to skip this, but uh, this will help you plan. You might want to watch this when you start yours. I'm going to skip it for now. And what you get is this. You have my site, which you can go in and edit and say, you know, welcome to history. You know, with Mr. H. So you can add a logo. If you look, you can add logos, um, and you would just drag up. So I don't know if I have anything, but we'll just try it. I don't know. This will be our logo for now. And it will automatically put that logo in for you. You got a little logo instead. If you wanted a title, you can turn the text back on, whatever you'd like. Underneath, you can click and you just begin to have headlines, you know, uh, world history, okay? You can even add more here. You can add a description button. The button you can change the text to click for my classroom site. Then you make it a link. And so I can go, let's just say this is my classroom site. I know it's fast, but you remember, gotta remember, you can rewind and you can backtrack and see all this again. Once you put that in, you now have a link and you're kind of ready. You can add about me, you know, you can add an about page or contact. We are only going to add one page. And so the way this works for me is your home page is up to you. You can do whatever you want. You can have, sorry about that. You can have a description. Um, you can have a description of your website. You can have a slideshow of where you travel, whatever you would like to do. But if you want to put an image in and text, you drag it over. You click to add your image. And I'm just picking random pictures off my desktop, so I don't know if they're going to be appropriate or not. But So I put a picture in, and I click here, you know, welcome to my website. I can highlight that. I can increase the size. And I can change the color. Um, you know, when you're in your text, I can make it links so I can link it to other pages, other things on my computer, my email address. I can add text. I can bold, italicize. You know, there's all these things you can do. But it is just like Word once you get in. And it is fairly self-explanatory. You just kind of click and do. When it says click to upload, you can upload. Now, what we're going to do as we are going to um, go to the page we will work with the most. So under pages, you know, designs, by the way, you can go back into designs and change your theme anytime you want. So if you decide you don't like the theme you're on, you can pick a new one. Under pages, they give you three pages created in the theme I picked. I might not want an about page, so I can just delete that page. Yeah, I want to delete it. And um, I'm not sure I want the contact page, so I can actually delete it. So I'm going to delete that page. I'm down to only a home page. But we need a page, and we need a blog page. So we're going to build the blog page. And then we just save and edit. You can change the name if you want. You don't have to. The blog page will look a little different. You've got your home and your blog now. And your blog page is a few things you do. Under author, you need to come in and basically say who you are. You know, Garth Holman is a dot, 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 dot. And you fill it in. 
The rest of this is automatic. It'll archive for you. It'll add the categories. If you look at students for tomorrow, um, if I go back to the main blog page, my archive, if I can scroll down there once it loads all the way, your archive, there's my archive. So we started blogging in 2009, right? And so as you look, that stuff will automatically fill up for you when you build. This is the page we will do all the work. This page, there'll be at least 10, maybe 11 posts throughout the year. You never add another page. You always go to your blog page and you make a new post. And those posts have to have a title. So why technology is the first one we're going to do. When you do that, this is where you add um, your categories. You can share this to Facebook or you can share to Twitter if you want. You can add a category. You always need a category that's worth a point. So why tech? Okay. The reason you add these is then when you go to um, your blog pages, it'll say along the sides the, the key words that address each topic. I like to start with image and picture because you're required to add a picture, so it makes sense to do this. And, you know, on a Mac, I like to use Command Shift 4 as a key shift to give you what's called a screenshot. And I can just take a screenshot. And so I make this my sc a screenshot, Command Shift 4, and I'll go over that in class. So the last screenshot I took, which is probably a billion, I take lots of them, is on my computer and I upload it, and now I have that picture. And then I just type like I normally would. Technology is changing world you know now you might type for 15 minutes you have multiple paragraphs you know you might want to put some things in and you might say you know I really love that YouTube video you did on um, you know did you know YouTube I guess and the did you know official comes up that's the one I think we watched there it is okay now you could find Sir Ken Roberts, any YouTube you think really captures what technology is about and how it's changing society. And when you want to do that, you have all these options of things. The gallery, okay, the gallery is um, under you, Akron. The gallery is this right here. This is a gallery. It's taking lots of images and putting them small, and when you click them, they blow up big. So that's a nice feature to use if you want to add lots of pictures. Let's say you need 10 pictures and you can do them this way. At the same time, on the home page, <clears throat> this one's called the slideshow. So you have a slideshow here. So if you actually click play, um, this will run as a slideshow. So it's like a slideshow that you can add. And again, if you look at your options, you have gallery or slideshow. You have a map if you'd like it. You can put a break in there. You can divide it, you can add columns, you can add a search box, you can add buttons. Buttons are just, you know, you can make links. You can add HD video, that's if you make it. You can add audio files if you make it, but you can add a YouTube. Well, I want to add a YouTube, so I drag it over. And all it says to me is add your YouTube video, right? <clears throat> and my computer's still loading. So I'm, I've got to wait for a second. I guess it's kind of like froze up here. Hello, YouTube. There we go. I don't know why it took so long, but once it, it pops, you get this. And it says the YouTube or the URL. So you go and you just grab the URL. Copy and paste the URL. Go back to your Weebly and paste that in. When you click off now, the video changes to the did you know. And you basically have built your first blog post. Okay. Once you click Publish Live, you're going to test your domain. You continue. You're going to wait for it to publish, and you will get a blue line that says this is your post. There's another piece up here you published, which publishes your whole website, the home page, everything. And then you can click the blue link and test your website. Here's my website. It's live on the web. Click for my classroom. You're back to my classroom site. You know, um, Here's the image we built. If we look up, there's a blog page. You click it. Your blog's here. If we scroll down, there's my image. Technology is changing. There's the video. See categories now. Says why tech. I can push play. The video plays directly in my blog. You built your first blog. If you go back, then when the next week comes, 
you just add a new post. And so we're going to try to do two this week, and the second one's going to be using search. And we're going to take a look at multiple searches. You might move this over again. One of the searches I'm going to show you is Wolfram Alpha. So when we go to Wolfram Alpha, <clears throat> um, you might want to, uh, let's do compare Ohio to Africa. This search is really cool. I'll show you a lot in it. But let's say you really do this and you pull this up and let's do, okay, so it builds up health, education. It shows you these things. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, kind of cool. You know, per UK. This is the stuff that used to spend hours in the library trying to find, you know. But let's say you take a picture, a snapshot of this. Then you go back to Weebly. We'll upload that photo. So as you're working in class, you might end up taking 10, 12 snapshots of the work you're doing, the things you're doing, and you can build a tutorial. If you want the picture over here, you just click and drag it to this side, and you can start. Remember, it was intent, or it was focus. This week, we looked at search, at searches on the web. I was amazed, you know, I was surprised, whatever, you know, you write a little bit about what we saw. You know, we looked at the following, Wolfram Alpha, we looked at this, we looked at that. Then you might get done and you say, I in intend, or I was, uh, I think of the way I phrased it, I better look again before I make a mistake. I think it was um, focus, um, impact intent, I'm sorry. I was impacted most by, and you talk about whichever thing you've learned the most about and impacted you. And now I intend to do the following. You know, and now you start to talk about what you're going to do as a teacher with what you learned tonight. So you're building a reflective piece. You can go in the intent. You could do a tutorial with here's how I did all these things. You can explain as much as you want. But it is yours to show me what impacted you and how you're going to use this information as you progress as a teacher. There's the spell check, so it turns red. We know there's a mistake. I intended, okay, or intend. Um, and once you're done, you publish live. Your link will come up. When you click that link, you can see your work immediately live up on the web. Okay, I didn't do a category. Oh, no, that's a required piece. So I go back, and now I can edit this post. And under categories, I add, and I do search. I add that. I publish changes, and because I worked on the side, this left side, I didn't just update the post, I also have to publish here. And so when I publish live in the upper right-hand corner, I can go to my test, and once again, now I will see on my blog page that it now says search and why tech. If you click why tech, it only brings up that blog post, so you're not looking at other things. So that is the basics of Weebly. Um, you know, I really encourage you, you know, when you're editing your posts, I do really encourage you to try to do slideshows or, you know, to add um, videos. You can do any embed code, and we'll learn embed code. You can make polls and add context and surveys. There's a lot you can do here. Um, I will show you one more thing because I require it. Um, you know, was, let's say I say it was... Uh, you know, Wolfram Alpha. Now, any word, you can highlight it and make it a link, and it says what's the page. So if you have um, Wolfram Alpha highlighted, and they have a, um, examples, maybe you take to the example page, because then you can see a variety of how they use this. You copy that link, and you paste it in, and you say open a new window. And now you've made this word a link. You publish your changes. And now you've added a link. So if you look at the rubric, there's not a ton you're going to have to do. You have to write. You have to add imagery. You have to add a link. You have to do the um, thing over here, the categories. And you probably have to have some um, visual or interactive piece in there. But it's really about you reflecting on what you're learning and how it's going to impact teaching and learning as you get older. How does it change what kids are doing? How does it change what you're doing? How is it going to change the process of teaching and learning? 
Now, we're going to do most of what we did in class um, on Monday. I would like you really, once again, if I can repeat, you know, when you are at the UA page, if you can take a look at it, um, I would like you to try to preview one, two, three, four, um, five is uh, basic. Six, you might want to create your account, and if you want to start building, you can. I will start with building the account because I know some of you will not get time before we start. The building of the home page, um, I'm going to have you probably do on your own to save time. You can make it anything you want to be on your home page. Um, and I'll give you some examples, and you can look at my pages to see what are examples that I'm kind of doing. So we're going to try to get our first blog page done in class and then immediately go to search tomorrow and get a second blog done in class. So we'll do two practice blogs tomorrow, um, one on why technology and one on um, search. I will have you post your link to the coffee break. So the coffee break is a Google Doc. Once you've built your page, you're going to come in. You are given a number on your little name tag. So I'm going to do mine here even though I'll delete it. I put Garth. I put my email address. I spelled that wrong, but I'll fix it. And my blog link. Well, um, here's my blog. So again, if I don't know my address, I publish. And I want the link to my blog page. This is my home page. That's not the one I want. I want the blog page, so I click it. This becomes the link. I copy that link. I go back to my coffee break and I paste that link in, hit the space bar. Now, whoever my blog buddy is, which we will pick, someone who's going to be reading your blog, they just come to this page, they click it, they click, and they're at your blog page. They don't even have to go through your homepage or right where they need to be to read. So we will do this today. Now I'm going to, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to delete this because I'll probably forget. And somebody else is number one. So I'm going to just delete it so you, it's not in there. But you saw the process. You will have a number. You'll find your number, and you'll go from there. So um, the other thing on the syllabus, again, I will, I'm going to retype this and kind of spell it out for you again. Um, we're going to kind of do uh, some of these together, and we'll have done two posts. And I will probably update the overview and try to figure out how we're going to fit this all in. Um, with that said, have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm sorry this was wordy and long, but at least you have a tutorial you can kind of look back to. Goodbye.